Now, let's just make ourselves a new file. And in this particular case, I'm not going to have a text box. I'm just going to say OK to this. In fact, let's actually, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do an automatic text frame. So I'll share with you a really cool technique here. OK, so let's save that. And I'm just going to call that step and repeat. This is a really powerful technique. If you know how to do this, you're going to outshine your coworkers, your employer. They're, they're just going to think you walked on water. OK, so here's what we want to do. I'm going to select this text box and I'm going to go to the object menu and I'm going to turn this into a picture box. Okay, so content graphic. Now it's a picture box. Make a change, save a change. Now, this is a very common thing to be able to do. But at the same time, if you don't know how to do it, you're probably going to spend the next three hours of your life until your project manager, boss, coworker says, you know what? I didn't want three across and seven down. I wanted seven across and three down. And then you're going to pull your hair out and go take yourself a four hour lunch and come back and still not solve the problem. So here's what we need to do. Here's our objective. I want to put, I want to put three pictures across. We're going to keep this really simple. Three pictures across and four pictures down. Again, write that down if you're not sure about what I just said. I want to have three pictures across and four pictures down. Now, before I do anything, I want to share something, a really cool technique with you. I'm going to select this box and I'm going to come up here and select the auto fit. Now, what that's going to do for me is when I put a graphic inside of here, it will automatically fit it to be proportionally to that box. Now, since the boxes we're going to create are basically a duplication of this box it's they're all going to be auto fitted so once again it's three across and it's four down now it doesn't matter the size of your space so if you wanted to say fill this space here if you wanted to say okay i want to fill this space in here i want to in this space right here i want it three across and four down it does not matter the space it's the same exact technique now, in order to make this technique work effectively, we're going to measure everything from the top left-hand corner, which is fine because that's what it defaults to. So let's understand how big these boxes need to be. Well, it doesn't matter how big the box is. I want to have three across and four down. So would it be fair to say that this is the width right here? So what if I took whatever number that is? And here's the part I want you to get excited about. This skill right here, I've had students actually rave and, and say, hey, that was the price of your whole entire course. Just to teach me that, that was the, worth the price of admission. This is a master technique. I did this back in Macworld in 1998, 99, and people were like, woo, woo. They think, you know, I, I thought you're a bunch of knuckleheads. This is, this is just whole number math. <laughs> this is really not, I think it's pretty cool, but it's the ability to let the software work for you. So we're going to take the width of this and I'm going to divide that by three. Is that fair to say? Now, before I do that, I need to break the chain here because I don't want to make this proportional. So I'm going to divide this number by 3, and that gives me this number. And I'm going to take this number and divide that by 4. Makes sense to me, right? Does that make sense? That now 3 by 4 will fit because I divide it by 3 and divide it by 4. How simple is that? Makes sense to me. Okay? Now, here's the really super cool part. Okay, here's the super cool part. I now want to put them back into place, but I certainly don't want to figure it out. I want to let the software work for me. See, if you learn nothing more from my software techniques, I'm a lazy guy. I like the soft, I want to squeeze the sponge on the software. I want it to work for me. Okay, so here's what we can do. We can use something called step and repeat. Step and repeat is going to give me a dialog box, command option U. How do I know I'll get a dialog box? Because it's a dot, dot, dot. Command option U. Now, since I'm a lazy guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number and copy it. Therefore, I can paste it into my step and repeat dialog box. So edit menu, command option U brings up this dialog box. Now, pay close attention here. We can't go horizontal and vertical at the same time. It's not going to work out that way. We have to pick to go into one direction at a time. So the direction we're going to go to is horizontal. So pop quiz, how many do I want to repeat if I want a total of three? Now, most students will go three. No, no. How many do I want to repeat? I want to repeat this two times. Vertically, how much do I want to move it? The answer is, eh, I don't. I don't want to move it vertically. That's zero. Horizontally, how much do I want to move it? Paste. The reason I copied so I can paste. Copy, paste. Makes sense to me. And it okay. 
And there you go. How simple is that? Select all. Now, since it's the same height, I don't have to copy because it's the same height. Command option U, edit, step and repeat. Command option U. And I want to repeat this how many times? Well, I want a total of four. So I need to repeat this three times. Now, this is good, could potentially, depending on the version that you're working with, this could knock it off the page. If that happens, set this number to zero first. It didn't happen here, but if it happens in earlier versions of InDesign, if you go off the page, it will bring up a dialog box to tell you you're off the page. All right, so we're going to repeat this three times, vertically, paste, horizontally, zero, and just like that, problem solved. Problem solved. Problem solved. Pay me. Pay me. Client, pay me. It took me two seconds to do this. I just charged you 400 bucks an hour to do this little layout, this spreadsheet, this contact sheet. Okay, now, here's the cool part. If I go to the file menu, now, unfortunately, I don't have that many images. One, two, three, four, five, you know, three times four is 12. I don't have 12 images here, so we're just gonna kind of dummy this, okay? So I'm gonna select one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is gonna bring up my queue, so I can go to my right arrow, goes to the next photo, Left arrow goes to the previous photo. Right arrow goes to the next photo. So I could say, okay, I want this photo to go right there. Arrow key to the right, I want that photo to go right there. Now keep in mind, we set that up here to the top right to automatically auto size. We're gonna put this one here, we're gonna put this one there, this one here, this one there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if I don't wanna to have to reinvent the wheel, I could copy and then paste this a gazillion times. I could do that. Okay, I'm just gonna go back in here, file. I don't have 12 images. I guess I could go get six more images. I'm just gonna do this. And I'm gonna put this one here, arrow key to the right. That one there, arrow key to the right. This one here, uh, actually I missed the box. This one, this one, this one. How cool is that? I think that's really cool how we did this. Okay, but, but, ha ha. Your client goes, whoa, 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 that's nice, but you know, I don't want these photos smashing into each other like this. I want to have some kind of space in between here. Space in between here, what are you kidding me? Well, in the next video, I'm gonna share with you how we can put space between our photos. So stay tuned. Okay, I'm gonna hit the escape key and just delete the photos that are in there for right now. And I'm gonna undo what we just did to go back to the size before we step and repeated this. So I'm gonna command Z a few gazillion times. And it looks like I can't go back that far. So I'm going to select this, delete, select this, delete, and just resize this back up again. I'm just gonna resize this back. Now, again, if you slept through fourth grade math class, this is probably going to hurt your head. Now, this is a very simple technique again. And again, if you want six across and six down, divide it by six, divide it by six. You want four across and nine down, divide it by four, divide it by nine. That's simple. And again, measuring from the top left or the top right, not from the center, because that's going to screw up the whole process. Now, this next step is a little bit more challenging, hence the, the keyword a little bit. But you got to understand how whole math works. You can't divide the minus or minus the division. What we need to do is get rid of the negative space first before we divide. Let me repeat that. We need to get rid of the negative space first before we start dividing. Therefore, we multiply in addition because the option of dividing and subtraction is multiplying and addition. So here's what we need to do. Okay, we want to have that same three across, four down. But here's what you have to think about. How much space am I going to have? Well, I call it the hand method. Five fingers, four space. Three fingers, two spaces. Two fingers, one space. If you had 900, if you had 1,000 boxes, how many spaces would you have? You would have one less. You would have 999 spaces. So with that in mind, here's what we need to do. I want to have a quarter inch between each box a quarter inch between each box well across how many spaces just just think about the space if i have three boxes across how many spaces the answer is two what's two times a quarter two times a quarter is a half or a half inch so what i need to do over here is minus minus 
0.5 inches. Now you could do the math right there, and that's going to get rid of that negative space. And we're going to do the same thing for here. We want to have a quarter inch space in between here. Okay, but here we have four boxes, so I have three spaces. So three times two, three times a quarter. If you had three quarters, you'd have 75 cents, right? Makes sense to me. So minus 0.75 inches. Boom. Again, you have to get rid of the negative space first before you start dividing. It's really, really that simple. This is third, fourth grade whole number math. And if you slept through fourth, third and fourth grade whole number math, well, this is going to hurt your head. Okay, so now I take the width of this and I divide by three. Boom. And I take the height of this and I divide by four. Boom. Brilliant. Makes sense to me. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go horizontal first. I'm going to take that number because that's the number we need to move by. And the reason I picked this number first, because that was the last thing that we step and repeated. Just a little bit of common sense there. Edit menu, step and repeat, command option U. So we need to repeat this three times. And we're going to paste, but we're not done yet. We need to put back in that quarter inch. So we need to say plus 0.25 inches. And hit OK. And there you go. Perfect. Works out for me. It's that, that I remember our, our math teacher saying, someday you're going to have to use this. Mark my word. Someday you're going to use this math, this algebra, this geometry, this trigonometry, this topology. Which, by the way, one of my first college classes went topology. It totally it made my head fell off. Before. But eventually I got it. It was a study of angles from distances. It's, it's, it's good stuff. Topology. If you ever want to be tortured, it, when you get done being tortured from watching my videos, if you really want to be tortured, take a course in topology. All right, enough of that. So I'm going to select all, and I'm going to come over here to the width, and I'm going to copy that because I'm a lazy guy. I don't want to have to retype that. Why? I have a computer. Copy. So edit, step and repeat, and we're going to repeat this twice. See right there, you got the error message. So what you'll need to do is knock that down to zero because I don't want to move it vertically. I want to move it horizontally. That plus 0.25 inches and I want to repeat this twice and there you go pay me thank you thank you and good night try the fish don't forget to tip your Barton weight staff and we'll see you next week anyway so how cool is that now I will share with you in subsequent videos that InDesign actually makes it simpler than this but you really need to know how to do this when under the gun, where you want to fill a space exactly. And it could be an odd space. Maybe, maybe you want to fill just this space right in here. See, if I can take my guide, and I can put a guide right here, and I can put a guide right there. So say that you want to just take this space right here and have nine pictures across and 20 pictures down. It's exactly the same type of thinking. So if I go to the File menu, Command Duh, Command Duh, I can select those files and just follow the bouncing ball. So I'm going to put this photo and this photo and this photo and arrow key to the right and that photo arrow key to the right and this photo arrow key to the right and this photo etc etc. Okay we're still waiting for the photos from the client for this bottom section but that's how you can do a contact sheet or any space that you want to do. So again you're simply taking your entire area okay and if you want to put space in there you have to minus the space first. So it didn't have to be a quarter inch. This could have been a quarter inch this way, but maybe a half inch that way. So if I have one, if I have four image, I have four spaces. Four times a half inch is 15, 1.5 inches you'd have to minus out. Again, if you slept through fourth grade math class, this is really going to hurt your head. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Look forward to more videos. I actually in our next video, we'll do some more exciting stuff working with documents. So talk to you soon.